Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? <laughs> In the case of Georgia Tech, yeah, ditto. They're not changing their offense whatsoever. Yeah, we're in the area of college football where most teams like to spread the ball out and they like to throw the ball quite a bit, okay? A lot of teams like to do that. But not in Atlanta, not with GT, not with Georgia Tech, you know. They're a lot, a lot like Army, Navy, Air Force, you know, Georgia Tech lives, dies, breathes by running the football. It's the triple option or the flex bone. And last season, Georgia Tech easily led the ACC in rushing yardage with 307 yards per game on the ground. That was fifth best, by the way, in the country. And a lot of offensive experience does come back. They get most of the stars back for Paul Johnson's crew, now entering uh, year number 11, the Georgia Tech head coach. Last season, uh, for the Ramblin' Wreck, it was a bit of a wreck. Um, just a 5-6 and six season, just an 11-game regular season. Four of their six losses, by the way. At one point in those games, they led by two scores. So, Yellow Jackets have to have better finishing power, but like I said, they got most of the offensive experience back, which will include Taquan Marshall back for his senior year. Started last year for the first time, and he had his moments. He was a team's leading rusher, as a matter of fact, featuring that breakaway ability to run close to 1,150 yards for the senior, 17 touchdowns last year on the ground, threw for 10, and had five interceptions. But in spite of the fact that Georgia Tech makes their living off of running the ball, you still have to show the ability to pass. You know, keep that defense honest. And in the case of Georgia Tech, if you're a big Yellow Jacket fan, you're hopeful that Marshall can improve big time on that completion percentage, which last season was horrific. Only 37% of his passes were completed. That's the big number to look at if you're a Georgia Tech fan. It's not so much about passing yardage but it's about passing consistency. Being able to show the ability to complete passes, so like I said, you keep that defense honest, okay? That way they know that every now and then you can throw the ball and have success with it. Unfortunately, Ricky June won't be a part of that passing success for Georgia Tech. He was their big time play threat. He's gone, but we'll see if Brad Stewart can occupy that role. Only four catches last year for him, but two of them were for touchdowns, and Jalen Camp heard some really good things about him at the wideout as well. But Georgia Tech, of course, the meat and potatoes of that offense is the ground attack. And good news for GT, they get everybody back in that backfield. We know that Marshall, the quarterback, was the leading rusher. But don't forget about Cravante Benson, um, the junior. Last year as a sophomore, had well over 1,000 yards rushing and had six touchdowns. You return also Clinton Lynch, the senior, 7.5 yards per carry. Quay Searcy had six yards per carry. And Nathan Cottrell, 8.2 yards per Touch, even though I know he didn't touch the ball a lot. So the entire backfield returns. Of course, to make this offense truly sizzle, you have to have an experienced offensive line, and the Yellow Jackets have just that. Four of the five down linemen do return, including Kenny Cooper at the center position, and you also will have back uh, the other two members of the left side of the offensive line, including Parker Brown. Uh, both Brown and Cooper are juniors. At least a couple of areas that Georgia Tech excelled in last year that should really benefit them this year if they can continue to trend. Number one, time of possession, which this offense, that's one of its fortes. It takes time off the clock. Obviously, it keeps your own defense off the field um, as much as possible. Georgia Tech last year, 33 minutes of time of possession per game. And red zone offense, Georgia Tech percentage-wise was in the mid-70s. Every time they got into the opponent's 20-yard line, they came away with touchdowns. Yeah, scores are nice. But obviously, touchdowns beat field goals any day of the week. And Georgia Tech, for the most part, when they got inside the opponent's 20-yard line, were getting TDs and not field goals. Now looking at the Yellow Jackets defensively, and they're undergoing some changes, both far as personnel and alignment. New defensive coordinator Nate Woody comes in from Appalachian State, and it's going to be a change in alignment. Gone to 4-2-5, insert the 3-4 defense, and this could very well be more compatible for Georgia Tech in terms of trying to get tackles for loss, being a more aggressive in the sack department. Because last year, they really weren't. Only 17 sacks per game. And by the way, they were minus 5 in turnover margin and ranked low in tackles for loss. So this alignment should help in that regard. It certainly can't hurt, even though I know the Yellow Jackets only gave up 354 yards per game last year, which was 33rd in the country. Not bad, but they've got to get more aggressive and try to force those turnovers. So you do return some players up front. Uh, Desmond Branch, one of the defensive ends that's coming back. He's a senior, had 20 tackles. Brandon Adams should help out. Defensive tackle, 329 pounds. Pretty difficult guy to move back. And Bertavius uh, Glenton should also help out up front as well in that rotation. 
Linebackers, you get a couple of them back, and Victor Alexander may be the most talented defensive player on this Georgia Tech team. Uh, the now senior um, had a couple of sacks last year, 60 tackles. And the tackles, by the way, in terms of who they had back, pretty balanced. Brent Mitchell, the inside linebacker, is back. The senior had 51 stops a year ago. Secondary is the big, big question mark for this team because you got to replace them all. Remember last year they ran a 4-2-5 defense. Well, all five are gone. Four were seniors last year. And the one guy they were counting on having back, A.J. Gray, unfortunately had health problems, heart issues. He was forced to retire. So practically a brand-new secondary. But last year the Yellow Jackets, like I said, they didn't force very many turnovers anyway, single digits as far as team interceptions. Um, but there's going to be some new starting blood back there at uh, a strong safety. Could very well be um, – Jalen Johnson. Jalen Johnson had 34 tackles a year ago. And their number one recruit from this latest class of Paul Johnson's, um, Jalen King. Um, considered an all-around athlete that can do various things. Well, they'll probably line him up at the other safety spot, uh, the true freshman out of uh, Nashville. Special teams should be a solid area for them. Kicking-wise, they went 7-10 last year. Punting-wise, very good, 44.1 yards Per kick, and they've got the experience back in both departments. The schedule for Georgia Tech will have challenges on it, but shouldn't be so much in that opener against Alcorn State. You got to go to South Florida for game number two. And September 15th is the ACC opener. That's at Pittsburgh. And just like the Yellow Jackets, the Panthers barely missed out on a bowl bit a year ago. But September 22nd, Toughest game on the schedule, hosting three-time defending ACC champion Clemson. Last year, Georgia Tech lost to them but did hold the Tigers to a mere 24 points. There's going to be opportunities for victories later in the year. Louisville is in rebuilding mode, but you have to play them on the road. Um, get Duke at home on a Thursday night game in prime time. And then Virginia Tech. Last year, Georgia Tech, probably their biggest victory a year ago, coming from behind to defeat the Hokies in the fourth quarter. But you have to play Miami, even though you get them at home November the 10th. And, of course, you close out the season with hated rival Georgia. The Yellow Jackets, again, will do a terrific job of controlling the ball with the amount of experience that they have back on offense and in that front seven. I do look for Georgia Tech to improve from that disaster of last season. They're not going to finish in the top two in the ACC Coastal That'll be between Miami and Virginia Tech. But still, look for Georgia Tech to be a better team and maybe pull off an upset. I've got the Yellow Jackets finishing third in the Coastal. That's my look at the Yellow Jackets. We'll see you next time.